third video in a big series all about mapping out and practicing melodic arpeggio guitar shapes. Each video in this series focuses on a different chord type. This video is on the major seven chord. We're gonna learn the five positions, the five arpeggio guitar shapes for the major seven chord, playing just the chord tones of this chord. This is really essential information for being able to improvise over chord changes and just know where we are, target, address the changes, not get lost, just sound like we are perfectly within the harmonic movement of the music. So great for improvising, really essential for that, especially if we're playing jazz, but just great for any genre as well. But it's also just good technique practice. It's good just general music theory clarity for mapping out the fretboard and, and just knowing the instrument better. And it's also great for composing melodies. So to start out to get all those benefits, we just wanna have the vocabulary of the shapes down. That's why I'm making this series. And I have a free download if you wanna follow along, a free PDF that's just my chord tone vocabulary pack just shows all 12 different chord types and all the arpeggios and chord tone shapes of them. Just use the link in the top of the description to get that. In this video, I'm gonna just demonstrate how I want you to be able to play these arpeggio shapes just up and down. Then I'm gonna go over and talk about what fingerings that we wanna use for them. And lastly, we'll just improvise with each shape a little bit, cause that's the next step that I always recommend as we're working towards this higher level of improvisation. I love this stuff, it's gonna be fun. The last two videos we did major triad and minor triad. Now we have four notes, we have major seven. So the improvising on these chord shapes are gonna be more interesting. We can actually do something a little more melodic with it. It's still limiting, but that's okay. It's part of the exercise and that's what we wanna do. I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com. On this channel, I teach on a wide variety of guitar and musicianship topics, all designed to help us gain more creative control over music so we can express ourselves more freely. If you're new here, welcome, please subscribe and hit the bell. Okay, so I've narrowed down five steps that I want us to do on every single chord tone form, every arpeggio shape to get us comfortable improvising over any chord type all over the guitar. And so this series is gonna focus each video on one chord type, but we're gonna go through the five steps over each of the five forms. So we're doing major seven this time. Step one is to just do the arpeggio up and down with the root to root method. With the triads in the last two videos, I said we don't have to play every, you know, stop on every root with the following chords, with the seventh chords and beyond. I want us to really target every root with the our root to root approach, which is we start on the lowest root, we play up, when we get to any root, you repeat it, and you can pause and repeat it, or just repeat it and keep going. And you don't pause anywhere else. Really centers our sound on the root, so. Okay, lowest root, pause and repeat on every other root. Don't repeat anywhere else. You're bouncing right off the edge of the nose. So that's step one. Um, and here's the fingering. Second finger, first finger, fourth finger, third, and then slide up, shift up. You can slide or shift. You don't have to re-hit it, or you can re-hit it. Sounds good to slide or to re-hit it. Um, you can also use your middle finger to third there if you want. There are always options, but I'm just recommending kind of at least a starting default. Fourth finger, first finger, fourth, third, shift that, fourth, first, middle, first, middle, first. Okay, so that's what I want you to do. That's step one on every arpeggio form ever. Okay, step two is doing a melodic pattern of some kind. It can be anything. I'm gonna recommend this one where we go off of every note of the arpeggio. So you're going up to the next note of the chord tone form and back down, but you do that off each, off each chord tone, so. This is really important to do because we wanna break up just not only playing that linear pattern, we need to find ways to see it, not just in that straight order that we practice things in. We wanna do that first and get the fingering right, then do the pattern and let yourself kind of find any fingering that works for you for the pattern. And we're gonna be improvising next. And really with improvising, you, you don't have to stick to any fingering whatsoever because fingering is about context. So for that up and down version, we want a specific fingering, everything else, you just, you could even play with your first finger. And we're really just wanting to get to know the, the chord tone form so well. Can you see every note in it equally clearly at all times. So you're not just having to see only what's next going up and down. 
So that's always step two. And you can do any other melodic patterns or break it up in other ways too. Like you could go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Like a four note pattern. But I'm just gonna, for this whole series, recommend this one where we go up one and back off each note. The step three is to start improvising. Okay, and that just means play anything you want from the chord tone form only, from the arpeggio notes only, but play constant improvisation. Just jump around. Any tempo, you can play with a backing track if you want, you can play with a metronome or not. I can slow down while I'm doing this, whatever. It's about mapping it out still. Can I just jump around? and just enjoy the sound of this harmony as it pops out melodically in this way. Okay, the constant notes is important for two reasons. One, we don't want to get sucked into thinking it needs to be an awesome solo or melodic yet. And it's really not going to sound that way when it's just constant notes. It's just going to sound very exercise and that's good. And two, we want to condition ourselves to not have to pause because we ran out of where should we play another note. We have we want to be so confident that if we want it to, you could just keep notes going indefinitely. So when we do the next step, which is to play melodically and have actual musical phrasing and try to express something, then we don't don't have an excuse for for when we pause. We we are pausing because it's a musical statement, not because whoops, what notes do I play? Okay, so we want to be able to play constant notes. It's a fitness exercise of sorts, and it's a mapping exercise. And it should be fun also. I love it. Notice I'm still kind of trying to have a good feel, accenting sometimes. So you know, get, you can do a couple other other embellishments. I went triplet for a second, whatever, but you get the point. It's for kind of like, can I just see it so well that I keep playing? Step five is the next one, and that is now we want to try to play with, or this is step four. We want to try to play with musical phrasing. And the way I recommend doing that, if you're not comfortable with it, you can just try to jump in and be musical with it. Great. But basically make a, some kind of statement and then make sure you pause for some time so you're not doing the constant notes thing. You want to pause a little bit and react to what you played before. A great way to do this is if, if you're not sure, is just focus on the root a lot, start on it, especially end your phrases on it. And the other big thing is to just repeat a ton, repeat an idea a ton and maybe tweak it just a little bit, right? So if you start with an idea, repeat that idea and end on a slightly different note, that alone would be great or repeat the same rhythms, right? So if I try to do something more musical, I'm just gonna keep it real simple. So I'm doing a lot of kind of repeating, going back to uh, the beginning of a statement where I started before and ending on the root a lot. I'm going to talk more about phrasing uh, in the future on this channel, but I just wanted to address a little bit, just try to do something musical with it. And also still don't worry about it being, you know, amazing sounding. You want to take risks and just try something and just be comfortable, just be loose with it. If it's not you know, your favorite sounding thing, no problem. But we should be able to play something, find something that feels good with just the notes of the chord tones. If we can't, more notes is not gonna help us sound better. It's not gonna help our melodies, our solos sound better by adding more notes. We are gonna add more notes in the next step, but we should be able to play something that feels good. It's limiting, but we wanna work with the limitations. So step five is to add notes. If you know the scale, that works around that chord, in this case, just C major is great. Then you can add some scale notes, but really you can add any note. So these are one, 
one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Those are in the scale, so one, three, five, one, seven, one. That's the arpeggio. Going to two, playing four, but you can add any notes. So I added this note and this note, and there's all the chord tones around it, so it really can be anything. So every note can work, but it matters how you place it, where you place it. So if you play something you really don't like, it needs to just resolve somewhere, or you can repeat that idea to make it sound a little more intentional, or it's just a matter of where it was rhythmically placed that didn't sound right. That's, that's how it works. Every note will sound good if you place it in a way that uh, is around your chord tone notes. So we want to know the chord tones so well that we can go off the rails and even just play weird randomness and land on chord tones and resolve it somewhere. So that's a fun exercise too. Try to get sour with it. So it felt musical to me because I was following a path of chromaticism, but using a chord tone as kind of a note to play around with in between. So just some thoughts on, on those five steps. We're going to go through those five steps way faster for the next four positions of this exact same uh, chord form, the major seven chord, all the other arpeggio shapes. But those, those are the five steps to do, and we're going to do that through this series with other chord types as well. But let's go ahead to the next position, the next shape. All right, step one is root to root. <laughs> Pinky third, and then I want you to jump over to middle. Don't reach over, just shift. Okay, even if it feels like a little hop, that's okay. Then first, first, roll to first again. Duh, duh, duh. Okay, then pinky third, pinky third, pinky first, roll to first, shift to first again. Middle, jump over. I don't have a reach between these fingers, it really is impossible, so don't try to do that. Just shift over. That's your third finger. Pinky, there's that seven there. Of the of the chord, so okay. That's step one. Step two is our pattern. Okay, work out your whatever fingering can work at all for you. It's good to kind of investigate that. Step three is to improvise kind of just constant notes. Nice and slow is fine if you want to. This is great. Should be fun and stimulating no matter what. You could even just sit and do this while you think about what else to play. which gave me an idea to just play other notes in between. But either way, you're just mapping out all those available notes by just playing them kind of randomly and freely. Uh, step four is to try to do something music, musical phrasing with it. So I'm kind of just working on that musical phrasing, a lot of repeating, a lot of starting ideas the same way, ending them differently, or starting them differently, ending them the same way, a lot of the root. And lastly, try to find notes to play around. Again, you can map out a scale and or really just explore and find any notes. 
I could play chromatically around any note. And because I'm focused on starting and ending on the actual chord tone in between those chromatic notes around it, it's gonna sound fine. It's gonna sound, you know, have a certain flavor you may or may not want to use, but it, it works. Let's move on to the next chord tone form here, the next arpeggio shape. We're gonna do step one. Step two is the pattern. With both of those steps, the fingers are just all kind of assigned in seventh position, which is nice on this for this particular chord tone form. And then step three is to just constant improvisation. So notice I'm, I was pausing sometimes, that's not on purpose. I'm just kind of warming up to it. Let yourself just try things. It's okay to not be perfect. Okay, uh, and then we're gonna try to be actual, mu actually musical with it. So when you, when you play one something that you're like, hey, that could be a, a nice little song. That could be a silly, silly little melody that actually makes sense as a song. That's when you know you're hitting your phrasing practice correctly. to another note up there, that's okay. Uh, so now we're gonna try to add notes. Play around with the scale, or again, I really encourage you to try any weirdness, as long as you come back to chord tones. Let me play a loop along here so you can hear chords under it, so you can hear how, how well it can work to play any notes. So just get kind of being adventurous, sitting on that four for a second. Da, da, da. That's what people call the avoid note, right? Da, da. But it has a musical flavor to it. You can absolutely play it. Da, da. And I was resolving to the three, of course, uh, within the chord tone form. Okay, let's move on to the next shape. That's step one, okay? We're gonna use middle finger, first finger. I want you to jump over to second finger. Okay, so then all of these can be played with your second, third, and fourth fingers. Second, third, fourth, third, fourth, third. Tips, all tips of fingers there. Okay, don't reach for this between the third and the fifth of the chord. Just shift over there. Okay. So here it is again. Step one, step two is our pattern. We always want to do it from the lowest note for the pattern. Notice my fingering got weird there because 
I could kind of map out exactly what I want, but I didn't have it ready, so I just did whatever I could. And I think that's good to explore a little bit. You can find what works for you, and just the only strict fingering for now I'm recommending is just as long as up and down we have a strict fingering. So the pattern on this one is, is pretty tricky. That breaks it up nicely. Next, we're going to do constant improvisation. I like to slide into notes. I don't really count that as it being a different note. I just think of it as kind of an embellishment. Um, and then we want to try to do some phrasing. something musical, something phrasing, and then a fifth step is to try to add other notes around it. Just try whatever. Could take a while to get there. I'll play over the loop. know the chord tones where all the chord tones are the safer it is to just try stuff if you try something and you lose where those chord tones are that's when you know you need to you know refine your view on those more with those other steps uh, but if you know them just rock solid you really can just explore and try anything and feel safe getting back to a consonant sound anytime any moment let's go on to the next shape here is step one again. Okay, step one, all the fingering is just lined up with uh, position 12, first finger lined up with fret 12. Okay, step two is that pattern. And any other kind of ways of breaking it up that you might want to do. Next, just to be able to improvise or improvise a constant. See it that clearly. Then try to be musical. So when I'm going for musicality, I'm really, I feel safe being kind of trying something really simple. And I'm not afraid of trying something and not liking it too. It just, that's improvisation. You have to just go for it. Um, and then sometimes I'm pleasantly surprised like, ooh, that really went somewhere I liked, sometimes less so. Um, but I'm really okay with trying something so simple. of that step before where I'm allowed to just kind of go to town and go no 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 notes 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 all over the place if we don't do that first we kind of feel like we have to prove ourselves and play a bunch of notes but if you do that first so you really feel like no of course I could play a bunch of notes if I want to because I practiced that well then you can really just be fine feel confident being tasteful one three and five just trying to make something little kind of rhythmic and melodic out of it and then when you want to fill in those phrases with with more notes you have that ready to go you know 
if you want to end a phrase with just a bunch of notes and then land on the root, that's that works really great. So, uh, okay, the next step is to just try to add notes around. If you see those notes really clearly, what do, what do the notes around it sound like? back for that a lot to kind of justify it because it was a little funky and I was like well what am I doing where am I going so then I'll go back and kind of almost refine it on the spot even if it was at a performance or, or a recording or something it kind of legitimizes what you might a quote-unquote mistake That's a lot. So the, those are the five steps on the five positions of that chord. Uh, we're going to do that stuff with other chord types. I hope you see how powerful that can be for improvising comfortably over any chord type, taking those five steps and uh, doing that really thoroughly. And we're only doing it on the, the root of C so far, but of course it goes without saying that you can move those to whatever root you need and and we should practice those in other places too especially as they come up in specific songs that we want to play and whatnot don't forget to download my free chord tone vocabulary pack that's all the melodic arpeggios from this series just amazing resource to have in front of you to practice this stuff just use the link in the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones hit that like button if you liked this lesson i post a new lesson every week next week i'll be back with the dominant seventh chord so we can map out and do the same thing with that chord type looking forward to seeing you there take care thanks for watching and happy practicing mm -hmm.